This is Twit. I want, I want you guys to imagine that Microsoft is going to announce that they have canceled HoloLens, that they're never going to do anything with this technology ever again. But here's the trick. You can't use the word HoloLens <laughs> in that announcement. Now, what I just said is not necessarily strictly true, but uh, there is a, the, the HoloLens variant that Microsoft made for the U.S. Army, um, which I think most would agree has been kind of keeping HoloLens alive as a product in a way. It's the, you know, the big And also contract. crippled them too, because the Army wanted so yeah. many things. It's super specialized. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, what Microsoft did was partner with a company called Anduril, which is fascinating to me because for some reason, this company has come up in my tech feed a couple of times in the past two weeks, and I've wondered about it because Anduril, of course, is the name of Aragorn's sword in The Lord of the Rings. I'm a nerd like all of you. Right. And, uh, you know, they reforge it and whatever. So, But this, they are a proper military contractor. Yeah, proper. Uh, Proper in the sense that they absolutely have contracts with the various parts of the military to the tune of hundreds of millions to several billions yeah, of dollars they're, each. They're, so they're, they're, they make drones they're and drone, sensors. They're a drone and, company. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is Palmer Lucky, who uh, previously founded Oculus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which sold to Facebook or better, whatever it was called at the time. Uh, he left there under mysterious and definitely negative circumstances. Uh, if you look this guy up, it's he, he's, he is so comically a tech bro that oh, it's yeah. impossible not to make fun of him. I'm going to try Dude, hard. He's, still, but, he's in his 30s, for God's sake. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So Microsoft is. So the partnership is Microsoft doesn't have to deal with this anymore, but right. they will be the preferred, not the exclusive, by the way, but the preferred cloud service for this stuff. So Azure right. will still you know be part of it. So this is a way for Microsoft to kind of wipe their hands of the HoloLens thing, but still get some business on the back end, perhaps. Uh, I mean, there's still other verticals that are using HoloLens. So yeah. the question is, where so, are they going to live? They've obviously, uh, obviously, the army was not happy with the circumstances, so they fixed the army problem. But now you right. have the other verticals. Yeah, I, so down. HoloLens was last updated as a hardware device in 2019. So it was it, almost exactly uh, six years ago, right? Mm -hmm. I went to that. It was a Mobile World Congress yeah. in Barcelona. Um, you know, Tim Swinney was on stage, and they kumbaya the hell out of that it was great yeah. um microsoft was going to come up with the hololens 3 it wasn't enough of a leap they did ended up not doing it i i was actually with brad in las vegas when he got the phone call from a buddy of his at microsoft who told him the story uh which was kind of interesting as it was happening but and apparently uh, they got to prototype and said no yeah it just wasn't enough yeah. Enough of a you know a, a move forward. So I I feel like this world has kind of moved on. Obviously, you know, not Hololens necessarily, which is AR, but um, th there are mixed reality VR, XR, whatever you want to call these things, solutions from a variety of companies. Microsoft supports, I think, all of them actually. Like so, Apple with Vision Pro, uh, Android is coming, or Google slash Android is coming out with Android uh, XR soon in partnership with Samsung, but for everybody. And uh, what's the other? Oh, of course, Meta with uh, Oculus. Um, mm -hmm and their stuff so i don't know they laid off most of that mixed reality yep. team mid-year last year as i recall i don't know i don't really see a huge future here obviously but hololens is one of the remaining pieces of what we used to call that one windows thing right where you could use, create a universal windows app that theoretically could run on hololens surface hub uh, xbox windows on across PCs, tablets, and phones, and that whole IoT, blah, 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 whatever. So most of that's been kind of well, dismantled. Well, Kipman was encouraged to depart in 2022. <laughs> encouraged to depart. I'm encouraging you to uh, do the right thing, and because yeah. otherwise. It was him and Scott Keen, and there was a few. Yeah. There was sort of a sweep of yep. executive level you know, misconduct that's moves right. all at yep. once. Mm -hmm. And he was in that. Yes, so they've been leaderless effectively. I mean, I know some of the folks that were still working on that, and they were very much waiting for new hardware. This thing's in, in is in stasis. This feels like the type of thing where I, I don't know if you know this, Richard, but maybe they're they're probably still part of the Windows org, or at least the more personal computing org, certainly. And I'm sure from their perspective, it's like, is there some way you could go to this other thing or something? You know, could we get rid of? We just could we just not do this anymore? Um, so I don't know. 
Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I think it makes sense in the sense that right now we, you know, look at how much focus they've put on AI related technologies. And, you know, I've heard a whole yep. org saying if you don't have AI in your workload, you're that's in the right. wrong yeah, team. Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, not that I don't well, think that augmented reality couldn't benefit from a bunch of these generative AI technologies, but. Right. Uh, well, that, but this is platform building. I mean, this yeah. is requires this is not a time to be building set. a platform. So it's right. not a bad time to sort of put this on the shelf for a while. Keep a couple of smart hardware people around so that they're at the right conferences and seeing when the new chipset's coming down and, yeah. you know, can propose at least, hey, this might be a good time to move. I think, well, the, the other thing about, so Satya Nadella, obviously, his time at Microsoft, his time as CEO at Microsoft will be marked by first the cloud, now AI. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be the extent of it, but whatever. That's the, the era. But the other thing he's really known for is this very the now very common thing at Microsoft, where Microsoft is going to meet their customers where they are, right? And so, when you look at AR, MR, XR, whatever we're going to call this stuff, uh, that where customers are is increasingly the Meta stuff, maybe the Apple stuff, maybe this Android thing will take off. Who knows? And. That, that, that's where you go and say, we can make a difference with AI where it will support the users on those products. And then we don't have to worry about the terribleness of building that platform or whatever. We'll just yeah. support the platforms that are out in the world. Well, my, yeah, Microsoft's wins have never come from original hardware. Yeah, <laughs> right. <Like> yep. <laughs> I understand this, the surface line in terms of building reference gear. And we met most, most of the cases, when you talk about the good mice and the good keyboards, it was about building reference gear. It's like, hey, this yeah. stuff could be good. And it's perfectly fine to make a small lot product that is expensive yep. and is good for certain customers, but it sets a bar for the rest of the ecosystem to build underneath or to attempt to exceed. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I was at, yeah, it was the, the event at which they launched Surface Duo, which was that little, you know, the two screen Android thing. Yep. And I was, I think it's fair to say I was on the negative end of the spectrum on that one. You know, it didn't make sense to me at the time. We, Samsung had already done at least two generations of a folding phone. It was like, what are, what are you doing? You know, you're a little late. Yeah. And uh, Frank and Shaw said, an Android phone anyway. Yeah. And, but Frank Shaw said to me, he says, let me, let me just ask you theoretically, like if we can make a small business out of this and it's profitable, I mean, is that okay with you? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Of course. But it's the profitable thing. I'm not really, you know, like, I, I yeah. Mean, yeah, of course, that would be fantastic. Is that what you're doing? Like, you know, we never got to that part of the conversation. So yeah. I'm not ripping on Frank, but it's a fair point like that he made, which is, yeah, that, that's fine. But I think the problem is these businesses, which I would argue maybe are a, a bit of a distraction today because of the company's focus, like you said, with AR and, and okay. Well, well, and at the same time, like Kipman's legacy, like the original Surface before it was a laptop, it was a table. Do you remember yes, this thing? Yeah, of course, right? I, I've a seen it. A table you yeah. could yeah, yeah. not show on stage because it was optically controlled and stage <laughs> lights were screwed up every time. That's right. It was right? looked like a Pac-Man machine from like yeah, the, it was, the it roller Yeah, it was literally from, the same you know. form factor as the old Pac-Man machine. But he parlayed that into um, that the Xbox accessory, right? Do you remember the yeah, gizmo the, that uh, sat on top that yeah, you could the do? Connect, yeah. F yeah, the connect and do frame recognition. And that was yep. going to revolutionize Xbox and not enough people bought it and it couldn't did great for, at first and then it couldn't see people if their skin was anything other than lily white which was kind yeah. of a problem oh, there's some uh, great the, stories from the connect story like i remember at one point they had to send out an email saying please because they had all these beta testers that were microsoft employees please do not beta test this thing naked because we do have to look we're at literally doing footage. body scans yeah yeah because <laughs> there's a, Cause um, it was in testing right the you don't actually see this in real life but the um when they when they do the demo of how it mapped the room, the connect, they would use like that matrix dots that would kind of go yep. over and around. Right. And so that effect actually figures prominently. If I remember correctly, I think it was a, uh, a paranormal activity movie where they were, they, the, the connect was making those green dots everywhere. And like, I, I don't remember exactly how they did, but like, you know, some thing moved through the room and it, it detected the, you know, the they, mass of they, the they, thing. Right. Um, but, yeah, it yeah it had a, it was a flash in the pan, but it was uh, yeah briefly very successful, and then they decided it was going to be a Pre requirement. Briefly for exciting. I don't think it was ever successful because you couldn't. Yeah. You know, the, the real question is, can you make a game with this interface that people care about? And now we get back to the gaming problem, where the amount of money it takes to make a good game on that. Right. Um, was I hard. think that. Uh, I think that. 
this this is it's not this is not a Microsoft problem, but I think this is a problem when you, as a tech company in this case, have this. You come up with like what is essentially a tech demo. Like Hololens was like this. Yeah. And and the reason Hololens became a product was because they had this tech demo, and Satya Nadella became the CEO, and he saw that and he said, "Make something," <laughs> you yeah. know. And I think Connect was like that, where they're like, "Okay, this is crazy." Let's productize it. And so they take this risk. They spend, it's hardware too in both cases, right? So it's a a huge investment. Um, You're never going to get it right in V1. So you hope, you know, as we move down the road, you know, and and Holland's got a lot better in V2 for sure, like a field of view and so forth. But a lot of times those, like the the things that demo well aren't always great as products. Yeah. And there's so Uh, much more to making a product. The Kinect's from 2010. Like, this is a while ago, right? Yeah, this was, yeah. So the Xbox 360 came out in 2005. And if you think about it, this would have been its mid season bump, (laughs) right? Just as this thing started, we've done 1080p, you know, we've done a couple little hardware things. Like, the Kinect was maybe the thing that, you know, pushes it through the second half of that life cycle. Uh, Unfortunately, it lasted about 15 seconds. So, you know. And, you know, we had the Nintendo Wii at the time, and Microsoft was busy copying some of the UIs. Remember, they did a little me-like avatars and with the little weeble heads and stuff. And I think uh, the Kinect was seen as... That's back when Don Matrick was running the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. The Mr. Submarine. Um, And, uh, you know, like, but they... there were games that were like, you know, you're going down the river in a raft and everyone's yeah. standing in the room jumping together. And Well, this was the um, real problem is they're video game players. Did you want them to, you're going to try to make them move around? They play I, video I know. games. I know, I know. They're way more comfortable uh, sagging the couch, you know, than yeah. they are jumping around a room. But, but how long did it take us to figure out how to play with the Wii stick to play tennis How many ball people threw one down? of those numb checks through a screen? Exactly. Know? Before they're like, maybe we should put a strap on that thing. But this this uh, whole chain you know. of heart, like from the Surface Table to the Connect to the Hololens, it's all Alex Kipman. It's a logical chain of technology. Actually, yeah, it yeah. Right, moved into early and every one of them AI. is an example. I think we just talked about where it's like, wow, that thing is an awesome demo. Yeah, product probably uh, mixed, product. mixed results. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, I I feel like this is logically the end of this, but. A whole lens, that is, to bring it back to the actual but yeah, topic. But, but you put it on the shelf because who knows when AR breaks out and uh, or has an event where it's like, okay, dust that technology off again. Let's see where we're at. So Bur- Burke asked me about my submarine comment. So after okay. the Xbox 360, they, they did the Xbox One. And the original plans for the Xbox One were many. This was going to be the one that was focused more on entertainment than gaming. Remember, that was their big push. Mm-hmm. Um Connect was going to be a requirement of this console. And one of the other requirements is that it had to be always connected to the internet, including when you first set it up. So somebody asked Don Madrick in an interview before it came out, they said, well, what if, what if they're on a submarine? Like there are a lot of people who are the U S Navy, for example, are huge fans of Xbox. They play call of duty and everything. They can't connect to the internet when they're 10,000 or whatever it is, you know, 2000 people or what is surface. And he's like, well, I guess you're going to have to get a different game. He said something like, you know, you'll have to get a 360 or something. Right. And it's like, mm, good, bad answer done. And uh, like that was kind of the end of him. And it was the end of the online requirement for the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Someone says, yeah, the Wii was an awesome demo that turned out to be an awesome product. Yeah. I, it's, but those are tricky. You know, that, yeah. I, th- I think the, this is, I'm not trying to rip on Microsoft. I don't think this is a unique Microsoft problem, but it, 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 it's difficult to do that to get it right. I think the companies that do get it right. Like the Wii, I guess Nintendo did with the Wii. That that's a win. That's a huge thing. Yeah, but Nintendo um, but it, also controlled this dev story, so they made good games for that controller. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's not how Microsoft does things. They, and they it was a legit innovation from outside the. I don't. That's not even mainstream. That's not even fair. Nintendo is the mainstream, but outside of what the other companies in that space were doing. Um, it was you know I compare them to Disney. They're just kind of different. You know they just do things differently. Like they. They looked at this and said, yeah, this is here's something wacky. It doesn't make sense. You look at the the nunchuck controller or whatever. You're like, what is this thing? Like, it's crazy. But that thing was yeah. super successful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for them. Yeah. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.